Hello and good evening everyone and welcome in to the second game of our double header. It is the rivalry, Otterbein versus Capital. Two teams cross town here in Columbus, Ohio that get together, that despise each other, that want nothing to do with one another. But once they meet, they want to beat the other team. And tonight so far, it has come up purple and white. Congratulations to the women's team, as earlier this evening, they were able to get the victory over Otterbein. Now it's up to the men's team to try to make it a clean sweep tonight against the Cardinals. Alongside Jonathan, I'm Charlie Danis. And, uh, Jonathan, we were treated to a really uh, interesting uh, game uh, in game one. Uh, the women's team with a hard-fought victory over the Cardinals. Let's hope the, the men uh, can come through as well tonight. Yeah, it's, it's good to get the war back into the hands of the purple here at, at Capitol, and, and hopefully the, the men can close out this doubleheader by sweeping the bind here tonight. So let's go ahead and talk about the Cardinals on the season. Coming into play today, the standings in the OAC look like this. Mountain Union and John Carroll are your two first-place teams. Both teams 9-1. and one. They are trailed by Heidelberg at 7-3. And, and then you have Capital in this hodgepodge of teams in the middle. Capital right now 5-4 and four in conference play. Right behind them is Marietta, who they beat earlier this week, 86-83. That was a good win for Damon Goodwin Screwers. They were able to eke out the three-point win over the Pioneers. And then Otterbein sitting right there at 4-5. and five. So first place probably not going to be on the line for capital going forward but at the same time jonathan this is an opportunity for capital to improve their seating a little bit perhaps get a home game during the oac tournament coming up here yeah capital is on a two-game win streak right now a big win coming against uh, marietta earlier in the week here and you're sitting at the four seed so that means if the tournament were to start today you're getting home home court advantage right now so this is what honestly what you're playing for here because audubon sitting at the six seed uh standing right now and oac they're looking to crawl back into uh, higher seeding here. So right now you're playing for seeding and you're playing to beat your rival tonight. Let's go ahead and talk about Otterbein and it starts with their junior guard, Cam Evans, the pride of Chillicothe, Ohio. Evans comes into this game averaging 19.2 points per game. That is best in the OAC. What makes him such a good offensive weapon? Well, uh, it starts on, on how he's able to contribute as a player on this team and uh, having that leadership and experience being a, a veteran player on this team. And uh, you can talk more about his stat lines of how he's performing this earlier in the week and how he's been doing for the season. Also, Alex Hanna is another standout offensive player for the Cardinals. We've been singing the praises of Trey Hammond for Capital who leads the OAC in three-point shooting with 55%. Alex Hanna, not that far behind, third best in the conference, shooting 48% from downtown. Again, another offensive weapon for this Cardinals team. Yeah, and you, you talk about this matchup here and focusing on what happened in the last matchup that they played. Otterbein was able to handle their business at home, 80-70 to 70 in that matchup. And there wasn't really a lot of help in that matchup for Capital. You had three scores and Ryan Roth, Ryan Seaver, and Carter Combs with double-digit figures. But uh, Otterbein played as a unit. And uh, you talk about Alex Hanna, Julian Heckman, and Cam Evans were big contributors in that, that takeover and that win there for uh, Otterbein last time they played up. Interesting looking at Otterbein's stats. Obviously, you, you have Cam Evans, lean scorer in the OAC. You have Alex Hanna, one of the best three-point uh, shooters uh, out there in the Ohio Athletic Conference. Julian Heckman comes in averaging 10.4 points per game. Dallas Patrick, their guard that has seemingly been there forever, their senior guard out of Gahanna, he averages a little over 11. But, man, Jonathan, after those four, there is a major drop when it comes to scoring. In fact, the next closest scorer for the Cardinals after you get done talking about Dallas Patrick's stat line is Troy Scouten, the freshman who's averaging 4.6 points per game. I kind of have the feeling in a game like this tonight, bench points are going to be important, and I don't know if the Cardinals have enough firepower off the bench once you get past that big four of theirs in their starting lineup. Yeah, man, with this matchup here, uh, knowing who their key contributor scorers are, that shows you Capital is going to have a difficult time of, of trying to stop somebody because if you stop one, somebody else is going to uh, going to get a heat check here. And so what Capital has to do and make sure they do a good job in this situation is getting off to a good start. Capital when they're slow to, 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 to keep their opponent in this game here. But when they take off on the offensive end, they can't be beat. I'll say this. 
Capital with a very good offensive game plan and that win over Marietta on Wednesday night. There were six, count them, six players for Capital in double figures. And, Jonathan, I think it's going to take a similar effort offensively. They're going to have to spread the wealth a little bit uh, offensively, getting shots for different players here and there, uh, feed, uh, piggybacking off of that great point of getting off to the good start. Got to get the offense in rhythm. Got to get something going from three as well because it really helped Capital, especially in that win over Marietta the other night, doing good things from the perimeter. Yeah, and when Capital is able to spread the ball around and you don't want to put too much pressure on their leading scorer and Carter Combs or, or, or trying to shoot all the baskets and, and come back from a deficit. When you're able to get into a flow of things, able to feed your big man down low and Nixon when he comes up off the bench, and you have key components like an X-Factor like Trey Hammond who has that ability to shoot deep behind the range. and uh, You know who your key players are. If everybody plays their roles to perfection tonight, this is going to go in their favor. Meanwhile, this promises to be a very exciting atmosphere, the largest student crowd that we have had for a men's basketball game this season as the pride of the purple are filling up the student section. They have been passing out black shirts with the words, pluck the bind on the front of those shirts. So they're going for a blackout tonight. Should be a very festive atmosphere. Otterbein, one of the few teams in the OAC that actually bring their cheerleaders, the opposition bringing their cheerleaders to a game here at Capitol. You also have the uh, Capitol connection involving Otterbein head coach Andy Winters. You may remember, folks, a few years back, head coach Damon Goodwin had to step aside from the program to deal with some health issues. Andy Winters was the guy that filled in for much of that season before ultimately taking the reins at Otterbein. A very cool connection and a rivalry that continues to evolve between both teams. Yeah, this rivalry runs deep here, and surprisingly, uh, out of the, all the times that we've, we've matched up, Capital has the winning record uh, out of this matchup, so hopefully they can keep that alive. Should be a very fun game. One of the best rivalries in all of the OAC. Crosstown rivals here in Columbus. Otterbein coming from Westerville to here in Bexley to take on their longtime rival, Capital. Coming up, we will have the National Anthem, the starting lineups, and the opening tip-off. It is a renewal of one of the best rivalries in the OAC, Otterbein Capital, coming up next here on athletics.capital.edu. Thank you. 
Once again, welcome into the special presentation of Capital Men's Basketball and athletics.capital.edu. A renewal of one of the best rivalries in the Ohio Athletic Conference as Capital plays host to their longtime rivals, the Otterbein Cardinals. Alongside Jonathan Brown, I'm Charlie Daniels. Let's go ahead and get to the starting lineups for both teams, beginning with the Cardinals. At guard, the six-foot junior for Chillicothe, Ohio, the leading scorer in the OAC, number five, Cam Evans. At forward, the six foot six sophomore from Milford, Ohio. Number 11, Alex Hanna. Also a guard, the six foot freshman from Reynoldsburg, Ohio. Number 13, Julian Heckman. At forward, the six seven freshman from Ostrander, Ohio. Number 30, Troy Scouten. And rounding out the starting five for the Cardinals tonight will be the six foot two senior guard from Gahanna, Ohio. Number 33, Dallas Patrick. The head coach of the Cardinals in his fourth year at Otterbein. Andy Winters. Now the starting lineup for the Comets. At forward, the 6'7 sophomore from Ottoville, Ohio, number five, Ryan Seaver. At guard, the 6'2 junior from the Queen City of Cincinnati, Ohio, number 11, Caleb Crawford. At guard, the 6'2 sophomore from Westchester, Ohio, number 13, Carter Combs. At forward, the 6'4 senior from Anna, Ohio, number 15, Griffin Dosick. And rounding out the starting five tonight for the Comets, the 6'5 sophomore forward, from Akron, Ohio, number 20, Dom Megerly, the head coach of the Comets in his 28th year at Capitol. The legend, Damon Goodwin. The pride of the purple is out in full force. They are wearing black shirts with the words pluck the vine on the front of the shirt. A very festive atmosphere. Both teams have their cheerleaders here. And this is game two of a doubleheader. The women's team here at Capitol triumphing over the Cardinals earlier tonight. Let's see if the men can prevail as well. Yeah, this is personal. This isn't just your regular average OAC conference matchup. This is rivalry week. And out of 200 matchups between these two teams here, Capital is the leading uh, team in the matchup with 122 wins to 88 losses compared uh, to the Birds here. So hopefully the comments can come out victorious tonight. Cardinals taking the first matchup of the season by a score of 80 to 70. That was up in Westerville. And of course, these two teams not only wanting to get a win of the rivalry, but this is the battle for the ore, which has been a, a tradition that was brought back after a long hiatus. The so-called trophy between these two teams. The referees, Adam Reimer, Ruben Davila, and Rick Rhodes. The opening tip, it's won by Capital. We're underway here at the Capital Center. Crawford will bring it across the timeline. He'll travel over to the left wing, surveying the Otterbein defense, directing traffic. Gives it off to Combs. Combs near midcourt, 18 to shoot for Capital. To the right wing, skip pass, it's picked off by Otterbein. The snag made by Heckman. Heckman bringing it across half court now for Otterbein as we get to see the Cardinals for the first time offensively. Heckman, the freshman out of Reynoldsburg, Ohio, passes it off over to Scouten, the freshman from Ostrander, Ohio. 15 to shoot for the Cardinals. Scouten will... Drive in, and he will miss the layup. Rebound, corral by Crawford. That's good defense by Dosick right there using his body. Crawford near the top of the arc. Passing off to Magerly. Dom 
Over to Seaver. Now to Combs on the right wing. They'll go inside to Dom, trying to back his man down. He loses the ball. Another turnover for Capital. They're second and has many possessions to start the game. That's one thing they expect here. The refs are going to understand this is a physical matchup. They are going to let them play. Heckman passing it off to Evans, the OAC leading scorer. Now they'll go inside to Dallas Patrick. Patrick dribbling his way in, twists, turns, and doesn't get the shot to go. Dosik with the rebound for Capital. He'll bring it across the timeline, bouncing it to Combs. Magerly from the corner, no good, and the rebound is taken by Heckman. That was good ball movement right there. Shot just not falling for Capital. Heckman brings it across the timeline. Still looking for our first basket of the game as we are approaching two minutes heading into this game. Heckman lost it out of bounds, and they'll say it went off of Crawford's fingertips, and the ball will stay with Otterby. 18-18 remaining in the first half. Still a scoreless game between these two longtime rivals, the Cardinals and the Comets. The inbound will come from the baseline. And they'll get it in successfully to Patrick. Patrick will dribble out of the corner. 12 to shoot for the Cardinals. Evans back to Patrick now. Patrick left wing. Patrick trying to drive against his man. Just a little spin move. Still looking for some room. Now a kick out. Three-pointer on the way, and it's knocked down by Alex Hanna. He has the third best shooting percentage from that spot on the floor, 48% entering tonight. And 48% from behind the arc here. Got to keep an eye out on him when the Capitals, I mean, excuse me, the Cardinals leading score. 3 nothing lead for Otterbein. Three-pointer, and that is way off for Combs. A miss. Cardinals with the rebound. Evans on the right wing. It is passed around to Heckman. Heckman trying to drive the lane. Still in the lane. Twisting, turning, off the glass and in. Nice move on the inside by Julian Heckman. And now it's a 5 nothing lead for Otterbein. 17-25 to play in the first half. Crawford, left wing, passes off to Combs in the corner. Combs dribbles out of the corner. 15 to shoot for the Comets. Seaver to Magerly. Magerly dribbling to his left. Tom getting out of some trouble. He'll go inside and another turnover for Capital. And a battle for the loose ball. Ca the Cardinals finally come away with it. Nice hands by Heckman. He's been very active defensively tonight for the Cardinals so far. And now a foul is going to be called on the inside. Looks like they're going to get Carter Combs for a reach in. His first, team's first. We're seeing the back and forth defensive matchup, uh, I should say. But the Otterbein is quick uh, to get some points on the board right now as they'll head to the free throw line. Cam Evans uh, heads to the free throw line on the year. He's a 77% free throw shooter. 19.2 points per game, best in the OAC. And his first shot is up and good. So now it's a 6-0 lead for Otterbein. 16.55 remaining here in the first half. Evans trying to push it to a touchdown, so to speak. Shot is up, and that is no good. It'll stay at 6-0 as Dosa grabs another rebound for Capital. Comets trying to break the seal here. Crawford, top of the arc. Bounces it over to Magerly. Magerly on the right wing. Dom passes it off to Dosik. Now to Combs. Combs inside a dish. Nearly another turnover, but Capital able to save itself there. Combs on the right wing. Combs dribbling to his left. Three to shoot. They go inside and another turnover for Capital. Heckman ahead. Three pointer on the way. Evans can't hit it. Patrick had his hands on the ball, but Crawford rips it away from it. That's one that they're lucky that he missed right there. Crawford down the lane and he misses the layup. Battle for the loose ball, and the Cardinals come away with it. Up ahead to Evans. Evans lays it up and in, and a timeout is going to need to be taken here for Capital. A great start to the game for Otterbein. 16-05 remaining in the first snap. The Cardinals out to an 8-0 lead. What are you seeing out there on the court? Whew. This is uh, not, not what they expected for, for the Capitol to come out right now in this matchup. Not how you want to start things off here, but the game is far from out of reach. It's a single-digit lead right now, and you just got to figure out a way to get the ball into the basket efficiently. I'll tell you one thing, Jonathan. The Comets have got to do a better job of taking care of the basketball. The turnovers have already started to pile up here for the Comets here in the early moments. Already four, and... We're not even at the 16-minute mark just yet. 
Yeah, they average about 14 per game as a team overall, so not how you want to get things started here. We'll see if they can have better ball control. Brian Roth has checked into the ball game for Capital. Anthony Holmes, senior out of Cincinnati, he is in for the Cardinals, who lead the comments 8 0. 15 55 remaining in the first half. Seaver to Roth, now to Dosick, over to Magerly. Magerly, top of the arc, over to Crawford. Crawford trying to dribble in. Step back jumper, no good. Way off the mark for Crawford. And the rebound taken by the Cardinals. Evans trying to dribble inside. He'll go towards the 10. He misses the layup. Patrick misses it as well. But the loose ball corralled by the Cardinals. Evans, he'll try to drive inside again. It looks like he got hit in the face. Crawford's incredulous. Evans feigned like he did get hit in the face, and then the foul was committed. What do you think there? That was a, was a late whistle, but I guess they'll, they'll award it to the Cardinals here on, on Evans. For Crawford, that's his first, team second. And now McCain thinking by the freshman out of Anna will check in along with Joe Thompson, senior out of Galloway. He's been missing out the rotation. Uh, he does have some tape on that wrist, so we'll see if it holds up in this matchup. 8 nothing lead for Otterbein. 15-18 remaining and a turnover. Magerly comes up with a loose ball. Over to McCain. Thinking Bine in the, still in the corner, nearly lost it, but it will remain with the Comets after it got bat out of bounds by a Cardinal. 15-10 remaining in the first half. Capital still looking for its first points of the game as they trail the Cardinals 8-0. Carter Combs will check in. Roth will take a seat on the Capital bench. Meantime, Finkenbein will inbound from the far side. He'll get it into Magerly. Magerly right wing, dribbling to his left. Double team, trying to get it into Nixon, and he was able to save it right there it goes off of the leg of Anthony Holmes that time and boy Nixon very lucky that he didn't turn the ball over there right there that's a good uh, basketball IQ right there from Nixon Finkenbein will inbound it he'll get it in successfully to Nixon Nixon to Thompson Thompson for three that's no good and the rebound is taken by Evans Cowboys are still looking for their first shot here in this matchup Heckman left wing being guarded by Finkenbein, trying to back Finkenbein down near the left block. 16 to shoot for the Cardinals. Evans being guarded by Combs. Back to Heckman. And Heckman gets hand-checked by Finkenbein as he'll get called for the foul. That's McCain's first, team's third. So we got turnover troubles for Capital, and now it looks like foul trouble rising up just as a team. And uh, not the way you want to start off here. They're still trying to find their first points here. A couple substitutions for the Cardinals is Jared Krager, sophomore out of Sunbury, and Bryson Lane, senior guard out of Lewis Center. Check into the game for the Cardinals. Still an 8-0 lead for Otterbein with 14 and a half to play in the first half. Lane, guarded by Finkenbein. Dribbling to his left, battling out of a double team, gets it off to Krager. Now it's over to Davis for three. That's no good, and the rebound. Cardinals losing it back to Davis. And now a traveling violation. That would be the Cardinals' second turnover right there. Capital able to cause some, some frustration down low. So the Comets still looking for their first basket of the game. It's still an 8-0 game with 14-10 remaining. And the crowd ready for Capital to break the seal here as Nixon... Trying to back his man down on the left block. Couple dribbles, hook shot, no good. And the rebound is taken by the Cardinals. Lane across half court. Being guarded by Nixon. Now it's over to Patrick for three. That's no good. Offensive rebound by Krager. And another fresh offensive possession for the Cardinals. Lane, right wing to Patrick. Patrick looked inside, now he'll drive. Now to Davis, back outside, scouting for three. That's no good, but the offensive putback is good for Dallas Patrick. And now a timeout's going to be taken by Otterbein. Otterbein with in control here. Capital trying to erase his donut here. 30-second timeout, so we'll keep things right here at the Capital Center. 13-25 remaining in the first half. 
10-0 in favor of the Cardinals. Taking a look at the team stats, Capital 0 of 6 from the field, 0 of 3 from three-point land. Otter by meantime, 4 of 12, good for 33% from the field. And 1 of 5 from three-point range, 20%. Neither team has really gotten to the foul line all that much. With Otterbein going one of two at the foul line, Capital has yet to get to the foul line. Just not a good start offensively for Capital, who is still looking for answers on that side of the floor. Yeah, right now Capital is just trying to stay within this. You don't you don't want to let the Cardinals get a large lead, and you got to figure out a way to get that ball into the hole right now. McCain, Fink, and Bine will bring it across half court. Thompson over to Magerly, Magerly left wing. Dribbling to his right, Dom passes off to McCain. Dish inside, Thompson finally breaks the seal. So Thompson, JT, with the call, his number back in action here. Comets finally on the board, but they're still down, 10-2. 12.57 to play here in the first half. But maybe that could be the start of something. Lane on the right wing, passing over to Patrick. Patrick, left wing, over to Krager. 10 to shoot for the Cardinals. Krager. To his right, passing off to Lane. Lane top of the arc, being guarded by Finkenbein. Three to shoot, two to shoot. Lane dribbling around, heaves up. Desperation three, that's no good. And the putback, that's no good, but then a tip. That's no good having uh, Krager force his way inside and get the putback. Troy Scouten actually credited with that bucket. 12-2. In favor of Otterbein, 12-13 to play here in the first half. Finkenbein inside, and he loses it. Another turnover for Capital, their fifth of the game. Then they go inside, and the layup is missed. Nixon grabs the rebound and then throws it off the back of the head of Traeger. That's another good IQ move by the big man and Nixon. Down by 10 here, you know, your Capital. You're struggling to get shots up. Slow the pace of the game down. You, you control this. This is your home court here. A couple of perimeter shooters come into the game for Capital. Trey Hammond and Roth check in for the Comets along with Crawford. Nixon to Hammond. Swung around to Roth on the right wing. Roth, he'll try a three. No good. Crawford, offensive board up and in. That's a phenomenal putback physical by Crawford right there. 12 to 4 in favor of the Cardinals. 11 and a half to play in the first half. Scouting. Top of the arc, dribbling to his left. Now he'll try to go down the lane. Spin move. Tough shot. Misses it, but his putback is good. And boy, the offensive rebounds continue to pile up for the Cardinals. Yeah, 13 compared to Capital. Six so far. Crawford. Into Nixon. Nixon had it poked away, but he regathers. Over to Thompson. Joe on the right wing. Passing inside to Crawford. And Crawford's going to be whistled for an offensive foul. Guarding him on the play was Julian Heckman. And that's already Crawford's second. Team's fourth. And Crawford will have to head of the bench. That means extended minutes for the freshman McCain Finkenbein. Just a few shots from getting the Cardinals into the bonus. And... That's plenty of time on, on this clock here. You're in foul trouble, turnovers. Something's got to switch here for the Capitals. Otterbein 14, Capital 4. 10.48 remaining in the first half. Scouting. Guarded by Nixon over to Hanna. Now in the hands of Heckman. Back over to Evans on the top at the top of the arc. Eight to shoot for the Cardinals. Evans trying to put a move on Thompson. Evans. Trying to drive inside. Tough shot. Blocked away by Nixon. Great defense by Justin Nixon, the sophomore out of Minster, Ohio. Capital trying to push the ball ahead. It will go out of bounds as they were trying to get Thompson on the deep pass there. And now a substitution for the Cardinals. Checking in for Otterbein, Anthony Holmes, the senior out of Cincinnati. Elder product from the 5-1-3. 5-1-3 represent. And a couple substitutions for Capital. Seaver and Dosick. Back in for the purple and white. Roth will inbound it from the baseline. He'll get it in, and thinking by makes the tough catch. McCain on the left wing. Trying to get out of a double team. Over to Seaver. Seaver, 15-footer, no good, and the rebound is taken by Evans. 
Evans looking to push the tempo. Evans will pull up for a three, and he'll knock it down. In, in his face, that, 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 that leaves a bigger taste. 17 to four in favor of Otterbein. 9.57 to play here in the first half. Trey Hammond, he'll launch a three. That's off the mark. Battle for the loose ball, rebound taken by Anthony Holmes. A lot of one and done possession so far here tonight for the Comets. And now Otterbein will look to slow things up a little bit. Heckman over to Evans. Now Heckman trying to drive on in. He's trapped along the baseline, throws it up, and it's tipped around, and McCain Finkenbein comes up with a turnover. Or Roth, excuse me, Roth, back three, knocks it down, and maybe that'll get the crowd going. That's a three-point assassin right there, making something out of nothing. 17-7. to seven. The Otterbein lead trimmed to 10. 9-13 remaining in the first half. Holmes. Passing off to Hannah. Hannah, deep three. That's no good. The rebound taken by Finkenbein. Good boy right there. Opportunity to respond here. Dosick. Spin move. Almost lost it. Back out. Seaver for three. Splash. Knocks it down. Ryan Seaver, the sophomore of Ottoville. That's back-to-back -back threes for Capital right there. Otterbein 17, Capital 10. 8.40 to play in the first half. Heckman over to Evans. Evans dribbling along the left wing. He'll drive inside. Tough shot. Can't get it to go. Hammond with the rebound. A block party going on for Capital right now. Hammond. He'll try a three. No good. And the rebound taken by Evans, who was knocked down on the other end. 17 to 10 in favor of the Cardinals. 8-14 left to play in the first half. Heckman near the corner. Passes out of it. Now they try to go inside. Holmes guarded by Seaver. Back outside. Block Blocked party. away by Trey Hammond. He said nah -uh to Brandon Reigns, the junior from Middleburg Heights, Ohio. Tries to hoist a three, but Hammond was having none of it. And then Reigns tried to step up on him. Hammond letting them know this is his house. Bryson Lane and Dallas Patrick back in for the Cardinals. 7.58 to play in the first half. It's the Cardinals 17, the Comets 10. Lane, top of the arc. Passed over to Holmes. Now swung around to Hannah, and that's a shot clock violation. The Cardinals lost track of how much time was left on the shot clock. And now Capital with another opportunity to draw a little bit closer on the scoreboard. You can feel just a, a tad, the moment, just a swing. Tick-tock, tick-tock. That pendulum is starting to swing in the favor of the Comets. So now Finkenbein. He'll bring it across half court. Let's see what Capital can do here offensively. Finkenbein on the right wing. He'll give off to Roth. Bounce over to Seaver. 19 to shoot for the Comets. Combs back to Seaver. Seaver, three. That's no good, but a foul is called on the floor. It'll go against the Cardinals. Let's see who is it's against. Looks like it's going to be Troy, Troy Scouten, freshman out of Ostrander, Ohio, his first and team's first. So Capital will keep possession here. Think in mind, will inbound it from the baseline. Looking, looking, finally gets it into Combs. Combs trying to drive inside. Somehow gets it out to Seaver. That was a whirling dervish wicket, wicked pass right there. Inside, Seaver lays it up and in. That's a good pass right there from Combs. Nice pick and roll move right there from Seaver. Otterbein 17, Capital 12. The Comets creeping closer and closer as we approach seven minutes to play in the first half. Lane dribbling around. There's a loose ball. Otterbein gets it, but it's into the hands of Finkenbein. Up ahead to Dosick. Dosick gets fouled. He'll head to the foul line. The foul will be, I believe, on Patrick. Yes, it will. Dallas Patrick is first, team second. It's a good job by Dosick trying to force his way to the basket to create contact as he heads to the free throw line. He's a 72% 72, 72 free throw shooter on the season. So Dosick at the foul line, hits the first shot. These shots are crucial. Substitutions, MJ Davis, Jared Krager. Julian Heckman back into the game for the Cardinals. So 
Kosick, second shot is up and no good. It rattles in and out. 17-13, Otterbein with the lead, but the Comets are making a little bit of a run here. Heckman trying to drive in, a kick, three-pointer. That's no good, and the putback's no good. It's tapped around, and the Cardinals maintain possession. Boy, that defense is really tightened for Capital, but the offensive boards continue to be there for the Cardinals. MJ Davis thinks about a three, now he hoists it. No good, rebound! And the foul is going to be called against Otterbein. And I don't think Krager knows that that foul was going against him. Now he puts his palms up, saying, what did I do? So Jerry Krager with the personal foul, team's third for Otterbein. Now it looks like Otterbein is, after that hot start right there to start the game off, they, 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 their lead is slipping away right now. A little frazzled, I would say. Finkenbein, cross half court, over to Seaver. Seaver to Roth. Roth dribbling to his right. Over to Combs. Combs dribbling in and can't get the tough layup to go. Cardinals come away with the ball. Up ahead to Evans. Evans has his pocket picked. Up ahead to Combs. And Combs gets fouled. No, he'll be whistled for a travel. Boy, I thought for sure they were going to whistle MJ Davis for a foul because it looked like he collided with the back of Combs. But instead, it's a turnover for Capital, and the ball goes back to the Cardinals as Dom Magerly checks back in for the Comets. That's one that Capitals want to like to have back here, but, you know, everything is turning back around here. You were down the largest lead that we've seen was, was 10 from the Cardinals, so being able to turn this into a four-point game here is, is a good way to turn things around. 17-13, favor of the Cardinals. Heckman will drive in, and he'll score. Too easy that time. 19-13. Otterbein still with the lead, 5.45 to play in the first half. Finkenbein bouncing it over to Seaver, back to Finkenbein. McCain, left wing, dribbling to his right, now over to Magerly. Magerly will go inside to Dosick. Dosick, he'll try to back his man down. Outside, Roth, three, knocks it down! Ryan Roth brings capital, two within three. I mean, it's two from three from behind the arc, six points already. And this coming from a guy that averaged 2.8 points per game heading into play tonight. Near turnover there for Otterbein, but the Cardinals keep possession. 15 to shoot for the Cardinals. Evans inside, pass inside. Davis. That's a block party. Blocked away by Dosick. Here comes Magerly. Cross the timeline. Seaver to Finkenbein for three. No good. And the rebound is taken by Evans. Evans now trying to slow things up for Otterbein. Evans being guarded by Finkenbein. They're looking to respond here. Over to Evans. Evans looking for an opening, but there is none, so he'll pass it around. Heckman now, top of the arc. Heckman driving, goes past Finkenbein and scores two. This is a great offensive skills right there. Heckman with the reverse left-handed layup. He's been very active defensively for the Cardinals tonight and contributing offensively as well. 21-16. 4.15 to play here in the first half. Dom for three. That's off the mark. Seaver trying to contest the rebound, but instead the Cardinals grab the board. Heckman, left wing, trying to probe that capital defense. Now passing off to Davis. Now in the hands of Evans. Evans with 15 to shoot. They'll go inside to scout in to Davis. And Heckman for three. Knocks it down. Boy, what beautiful ball movement that time by the Cardinals. Hey, it doesn't get no better for that. So the Cardinals doing a good job of moving that ball around. And now a timeout has been called by Capital. 30-second timeout. We'll stay right here. 344 remaining in the first half. Capital 24, Otterbein 16. So a little bit of a run made by Capital, but... Give the Cardinals credit, able to respond here a little bit within the last few moments or so. At first it seemed like all hope was lost for Capital to start off being down by double-digit figures. The Cardinals' largest lead was 13, and somehow the Cardinals, I mean the Capital, was able to swing back uh, into this matchup here, and the Cardinals were able to respond. Good ball movement on their end here, so we'll see how Capital can respond. By the way, I want to pass along a final from the NFL playoffs. The Kansas City Chiefs end up defeating the Jacksonville Jaguars 
27 to 20. What a turnaround for Doug Peterson and his crew down there in Duval County, but their season ends. The Chiefs will host yet another AFC Championship game next Sunday. They await the winner of the Bills and Bengals, who will play tomorrow afternoon. Meantime, back to our game as Otterbein with a rush opportunity here. Krager will bounce it to Evans, who misses the layup and the rebound taken by Magerly. It's a mishap right there from the Cardinals, one they like to have back. Dom trying to drive in. Back out to Combs. 18 to shoot for the Comets. Combs on the right wing. Combs still dribbling around. Over to Dosik. Dosik back to Combs. Eight to shoot for the Comets. Seven to shoot. Combs down the lane and it's blocked away by MJ Davis. Sophomore out of Westerville. Went to Central High School and he didn't have to go all that far for college. As that's where Otterbein is located, Westerville. Speaking of Davis, he'll take a seat. Going in for him is Anthony Holmes. Davis is actually the team's second leading blocker for the Cardinals, so what a great defensive play from him. So now Roth, he'll inbound it to Combs, and Combs has his shot blocked by Cam Evans. Here comes Evans the other way. He'll drop it off, and a missed layup for the Cardinals once again. Alex Hanna had that handed to him on a platter, but he just couldn't finish it on the other end. Got to finish strong, create some kind of contact right there, and that's a turnover for the Cardinals. And it looks, oh, no, nah, they're going to call it. Don't call a tech on Coach G. He's been warned. Okay, they're giving him a warning. Uh, one of the refs going down there to the scoreboard. Don't want to draw a tech here. Look, all emotions are high in this game. This Absolutely. Is, this isn't just a regular conference game. This is your rival here. It's the mind. The teams that are able to control those emotions just enough tend to win these types of games. And Lord knows Damon Goodwin has been in plenty of these games between Capital and Otterbein over his 28 years here in Bexley. Nixon trying to dribble inside. And Nixon nearly lost it, but then a foul is called against Otterbein. I'll go against Alex Hanna. His first and the team's fourth. So Roth will inbound it from the baseline. Thompson for three. Splash! Knocks it down. Joe Thompson, the senior from Galloway, draws Capital closer. 24 to 19 in favor of Otterbein. 2.20 to play in the first half. Heckman outside. And he'll go inside, and boy, what a feed and what a finish by Anthony Holmes. The intensity is getting higher and higher. Thompson to Magerly. Tom, top of the arc, over to Combs. Combs dribbling in, and he gets it to fall. No foul call right there. He took it like a champ. 26-21. Favor of Otterbein. Wild shot, but... But they'll call that a foul? Interesting. There was contact, but still there was contact on that end. So Ryan Roth will be hit with the foul for Capital. Team's fifth. So now Julian Heckman, the freshman from Reynoldsburg, Ohio, will head to the line. 83% came in here averaging 10.4 points per game. Right-handed shooter. It's up, and it's good. Heckman. Substitution for Otterbein as uh, Troy Scouten checks in, and McCain Finkenbein will also come back in for Capital. Yeah, Heckman finished with 16 in their win against Wilmington earlier in the week, 81 to 49. So we'll see how he can contribute in this matchup. One more free throw for Mr. Heckman. It is up, and it's good. Otterbein 28, Capital 21. Minute 43 remaining in the first half. Finkenbein, cross half court, triples to his right, towards the right wing, gives off to Roth. 18 to shoot for the Comets. Mager leap to Roth. Roth, three. And that's no good. Tipped around, and they're going to give it to the Cardinals. And now a whistle. As one of the officials is checking something at the scorer's table. Must be something that has to do with the clock. 
is wind downing in this first half here. Minute 23 remaining in the first half. Honor by 28, Capital 21. Heckman dribbling around over to Evans now. Evans will go inside to Scout on the big map. Scout in, almost losing it, and Nixon comes away with the steal. Nixon with the active hands defensively forcing the turnover. Now to Finkenbein on the right wing. McCain driving in, and he got fouled on his way to the 10. Looks like I have to go against Julian Heckman. That'll be his first. Team's fifth. Yep. That's in his thick and bond to the line. And on the year, he's a 80, 89% free throw shooter. Right-handed shooter. It's up and it's good for Finkenbein. Uh, that's coming off of one, 10 attempts this season. So, trying to keep his good streak on the line here. One more free throw attempt for Finkenbein. It's up and it is good. 56.2 seconds remain in the first half. It's 28-23 in favor of Otterbein. Capital looking to inch a little closer before they go into the locker room at halftime. Evans making the catch. And that'll be a kick ball off of the right foot of Magerly. That ball went pretty far as it went to, to the dance team over there in the corner for Capital, who will be performing at halftime here. So Otterbein will have possession, 20 to shoot, 42.3 seconds to go in the first half. Cardinals leading the Comets 28-23. Heckman over to Evans. Evans back to Heckman. Now bounced over to Patrick. Patrick thought about a three, but instead back to Heckman. Heckman dribbling around, a kick, three by Hannah. That's no good. Rebound. Otterbein, boy, the offensive boards have been so key. Hannah with another three. That's no good. Nixon grabs the defensive board for Capital. They'll turn the shot clock off. 15 seconds to go here in the first half. That one can hold for a last shot here. Make it a smart, selective shot. Thinking by Half court, bouncing over to Thomas. Thomas, he'll try a three. That's no good. Rebound taken by Evans. Three seconds, two seconds, one second. Evans will hoist it before the buzzer, and it's off the mark, no good. That is how the first half will end. Otterbein gets off to a great start. Capital claws its way back. And it's a close game at the half as the Cardinals lead the Comets 28-23. to When we come back, we'll get you updated with scores around the OAC, Division I men's basketball, and even some NFL scores as well as the playoffs are still raging in the National Football League. All that coming up during the halftime show. Again, at the half, it's Otterbein 28, Capital 23, here on athletics.capital.edu.
Welcome back here to the Capitol Center. A very nice ceremony here at halftime as they honor members of the 2002 and 2003 squads here at Capitol. Seeing them walk off the floor right now. Always awesome to see alumni come back and get a good hand from the crowd. At the half, Otterbein leading Capitol by a score of 28 to 23. I'm Charlie Davis. We'll be joined by Jonathan Brown in mere moments. But in the meantime, let's go ahead and get you updated with some scores, beginning with games in the Ohio Athletic Conference. Earlier today, Baldwin Wallace ends up defeating Wilmington by a final of 87 to 57. The Yellow Jackets getting a big game from Ashton Price. They start forward with 22 points to go along with three rebounds and a couple of assists as he helps the Yellow Jackets pull away in that game. Other games that have gone final. Marietta with a bounce back win over Ohio Northern 78 to 58. John Carroll beats up Muskingum 96 to 67 and Mount Union takes care of business. The Purple Raiders defeating the Student Princes in that one by a final of 94 to 71. Those are the scores around the OAC. Now some scores when it comes to top 25 action in Division 1 basketball. Earlier today, 21st ranked Baylor Eeks past Oklahoma, 62-60. to 60. 20th ranked Marquette defeats Seton Hall, 74-53. to 53. Ninth ranked Tennessee takes care of business against Louisiana State, 77-56. to 56. 16th ranked Auburn comes, uh, out, comes up on top, 81-66. to 66. 22nd ranked Providence takes care of business against DePaul, 75-64. to 64. 13th ranked Kansas State triumphant over Texas Tech. 68 to 58. 12th ranked Iowa State gets upset by Oklahoma State 61 to 59. 10th ranked Virginia 76 to 67 winners over Wake Forest. A top 15 matchup in the Pac-12. It's 11th ranked Arizona that ultimately takes down UCLA, 5th ranked UCLA 58 to 52. How about this? Second ranked Kansas not only gets beat but beat badly by 14th ranked Texas Christian the Horn Frogs taking care of business against the second ranked Jayhawks 83 to 60 at Fog Allen Fieldhouse. 25th ranked Arkansas defeats Ole Miss 69 to 57. 18th ranked Charleston, the Cinderella darling, the team uh, that could be making some noise by the time NCAA March Madness comes around. They defeat Northeastern today 87 to 61. Duke upsets 17th ranked Miami 68 to 66 at Cameron Indoor and finally 8th ranked Xavier defeats Georgetown 95 to 82. Couple games in progress at the moment. 4th ranked Alabama up 72 56 against Missouri with 3.48 to go in the second half. 4.02 remain in the second half in Morgantown, West Virginia. The Mountaineers are trailing 7th ranked Texas in that one 61 to 55. And finally 3.50 to go in the second half at Clemson, the 19th ranked Tigers are tied with Virginia Tech in that one at 44. A final today from one of the playoff games in the NFL divisional round in the National Football League. It is the Kansas City Chiefs that end up defeating the Jacksonville Jaguars by a score of 27 to 20. So with the win, another AFC Championship appearance for Patrick Mahomes and the Chiefs. They will host the AFC Championship game. They will await the winner of the Bills-Bengals playoff game, which will be played 
tomorrow afternoon. Coming up later on tonight, it'll be a pair of divisional foes from the NFC East. The Eagles, who won that division, will play host to the New York Giants, who were able to eke out a playoff win over the Minnesota Vikings last week. That game is scheduled to start in about 15 minutes or so. And then coming up tomorrow at 3 o'clock in the afternoon, the Buffalo Bills will play host to the Cincinnati Bengals. That game will be followed by the San Francisco 49ers welcoming in the Dallas Cowboys. That game is scheduled for a 6.30 kickoff. So with all those scores behind us, let's focus on the first half stats of this game. Otterbein holding a 28-23 lead over the Comets at the moment. And here's a look at the halftime stats. Team-wise, Otterbein shot 30% from the field, capital 31%. Both teams didn't do a great job from three-point land. Otterbein, 3 of 15, good for only 20%. Capital, only 4 of 16. That was good for only 25%. And not a lot of free throws made, or attempted, I should say, in that first half as well. Both teams going 3 of 4, going uh, 75%. What has been a, been a big advantage in this game has been rebounding. Otterbein has been beating Capital up on the boards. 29 to 16 in favor of the Cardinals. That includes 13 offensive rebounds by the Cardinals so far tonight. Other team statistics of note, assists, capital five, Otterbein four. Turnovers, just about even, capital eight, Otterbein seven. Bench points, capital 13, Otterbein two. Both teams with almost the same amount of blocks, capital three, Otterbein two. Fast break points in favor of Otterbein, eight to four. Steals, Otterbein 6, Capital 5. Points off turnovers, Capital 8, Otterbein 3. Points in the paint. That's a sizable advantage as well for Otterbein. 16 to 8 in favor of the Cardinals. And finally, second chance points, Otterbein 6 and Capital 4. And now on to the individual statistics. Here's Jonathan. Taking a look at Otterbein. Otterbein, uh, their leading scorer right now is Julian Heckman, who's leading the way and leading his team with 11 points in this matchup. Perfect from the field, actually. Four for four, one, one three-point shot from behind the arc. Behind him, he's got Cam Evans. The leading scorer has only got six points in the first half, so credit the capital to hold him uh, to under 10 here. Uh, you got to count out for their leading rebounder. It goes to their big man down low in Troy Scouting. Uh, he's got six. So does Cam Evans. So he's not getting points done, but he's able to get on the big boards. Taking a look at Capital. Capital, you're looking for somebody to – Take initiative here. Their leading scorer is not somebody you expect. And Ryan Roth coming off the bench, and he's got two, two three-pointers to lead the way with his team and six points. And right behind him with five is Ryan Seaver. Leading rebounder on his team goes to Justin Nixon, who's been doing dirty work. And I got to call out the blocks. It's been a block party here for Capital. Griffin Dosick, Trey Hammond, and Justin Nixick all have a block of their own. Very interesting first half. Otterbein was able to race out to a big lead to begin this game. Capital fighting back. Otterbein making a few adjustments. They find themselves leading this game. I think Capital should be very fortunate that they're only down by this much considering the horrendous start that they got off to offensively. Yeah, this was not a, a one of their best starting matchups to start the game off here. You're down 10. You let the Cardinals generate a 13-point lead, but somehow you're able to manage and get it back down to five, so credit to Capital with that, but in the second half, there's there's little space for errors or, or turnovers here, so you've got to do a better job of holding on to the ball here as a team, uh, and they're doing well. Uh, well, I was about to give them the benefit of the doubt, but they're losing the rebound battle right now, 29-16, and 16, so that's crucial as well. You're getting out-rebounded you're not putting as uh, putting up as much shots compared to the Cardinals here, but somehow, some way, it's still a five-point uh, lead for the Cardinals. So they got to figure out something here, and if they want to do good ball movement, that's going to work. Spreading the ball around and, and figure out uh, everybody gets a chance to touch the ball. Must get off to a better start to begin here uh, the second half here, and they got to get the crowd involved. The student section has been waiting to explode. They're donning their Pluck the bind. Black shirts tonight here. A blackout. And it's been a tremendous atmosphere here so far tonight. But got to get off to a better start and got to do some work on the uh, on the back uh, uh, on the boards as well as they were beat up in that uh, category and limit the second and third chances for Otterbein offensively. Yeah, you, you 
you've given, uh, I want to say the Cardinals have had some fair open shots from behind the arc that haven't fall. So they're, they're 3 of 15 as a, as a whole compared to Capitals 4 of 16 from behind the arc here. But if you have the opportunity to take some deep shots and they're wide open, you better pray that they make them. By the way, interesting stat from that first half. Cam Evans, leading scorer in the OAC, came in here averaging 19.2 points per game, held to only six. You know that he's going to want to get his buckets. But on the other side, there's going to be that guy for capital, the guy that kind of takes over control, takes control offensively. We'll see. Second half begins here at capital as Otterbein inbounds it. Julian Heckman, the leading scorer from that first half with 11, passes off to Patrick, now in the hands of Evans. Evans back to Patrick. Long jumper for Patrick, and mm. he'll switch that through just inside the arc. It'll only count as two, a 30-23 to 23 lead for Otterbein as we have just opened the second half. Seaver to Thompson. Thompson over to Combs. Combs will drive in and score and, and one. count the bucket and a foul. Kind of a late call right there, but Capital will certainly take it. Carter Combs, no Chanel, but he stays in his bag. As he heads to the free throw line. Okay, that's one of your better ones. I, I, I like that. <laughs> I, I, re I really like that one. First foul of the second half goes to Julian Heckman, his second. And now Combs will head to the foul line. And you have been known to throw out some good lines. That's, that's, that's <laughs> one of your better ones. I congratulate you. I appreciate it. Uh, Carter Combs gets that third one to drop. He's 63% on the season from the free throw line. Otterbein 30, Capital 26. Not even a minute into the second half. Still got a long, long way to go in this game. Evans, top of the arc, inside. Too easy for Otterbein there as Scouten's able to finish. Nice little pocket pass to the big man. So the Otterbein lean back up to 12. Mayerly, he'll dribble inside, and a foul will be called on the inside against Otterbein. Let's see who that's on. That's it. Looks like that's going to be on Patrick, Dallas Patrick. His second. Team second. And so now Crawford will inbound it from the baseline. 32-26 in favor of Otterbein, and now they will need to look at a wet spot here. As they get the mop out. Ain't nobody slipping and sliding out here. Floor is held up pretty well. I remember one game we did earlier this year that players were just sliding all over the place on this floor, which, which you rarely see. They do a good job at taking care of this facility. Crawford, little spin move, tough shot, off the glass and in. They take that, gets the lucky bounce. 32-28. Underbind still with the lead. But Capital within striking distance. 18.40 to play in the second half. Heckman, left wing, passing over to Scouten. Now over to Evans. Evans, jumper from the left point is good. It's that lucky bounce. Trying to extend this lead here. 34-28. Otterbein with the lead. Seaver, three. No good. Rebound taken by Otterbein. As Hannah grabs the board. Hannah now over to Heckman, being closely guarded by Crawford. He'll get it across half court. Heckman to Evans. Evans right wing. He'll dribble to his left, 14 to shoot for the Cardinals. Back to Heckman, or excuse me, Evans. Evans, eight to shoot inside, and Collins lays it up, or Scouting, excuse me, lays it up and in. There's some miscommunication going down low on the defensive end for Capital. Otterbein 36, Capital 28. 17.42 to play. Seaver, top of the arc. Over to Combs. Seaver lost it. Mayerly thought about a jumper, but instead passes to Seaver. Eight to shoot for Capital. Thompson, he'll try to post his man up. And now a foul will be called on the floor against Otterbein. This will go against Alex Hanna. Third team foul of the half. This is second foul. Rising. We set the shot clock here for Capital. Crawford inbounding from the baseline, gets it into Seaver. Now pass over to Combs. Comes near top of the arc. Now to Crawford. 15 to shoot for the Comets. Crawford drives on in amongst the trees, and a foul will be called against Otterbein. 
goes against Julian Heckman. That's his third, team's fourth. Now all of a sudden our referees, Adam Rimmer, Ruin Davila, and Rick Rhodes are starting to call this game a little closely than they did in the first half. As now there's a whistle. Crawford standing at the foul line. And it looks as though that scout is bleeding. So he'll get checked out. Yep, there's blood coming from that scraped up right knee of his. So a little mini timeout here for both teams. 7-17 remaining in the second half. It's Ottermine 36, Capital 28. The Comets right now just trying to chip away at this Cardinal lead. Yeah, you, you want to try to stay within arm's reach here. It was a nice little five-point lead difference uh, for the Cardinals. Now it's extending to eight. You don't want it to get back in the double digits right now. Every possession counts right now. So now Crawford will head to the foul line. And Caleb has been doing better from the foul line as of late. He has gotten his season average up to 60%. First shot is up, and that's no good. One more free throw for the junior from Cincinnati. Went to Princeton High School down there in the 5-1-3. Got some good products coming out of Princeton. Uh, one in the NBA, Darius Baisley. And we have some uh, in the NFL as well. Well, uh, Paris Johnson, he'll be declaring for the draft from Princeton as well. He'll be a top 10 pick, former offensive tackle at Ohio State. At least that's what the mock drafts tell me. Cam Evans. Dribbling around, Otterbein leading 36 to 29. Heckman over to Evans to Patrick. Now to Hannah. Heckman on the left wing, dribbling around, three pointer, no good. Rebound, Seaver grabs it and feeds it ahead to Combs. Combs up ahead, Magerly with a nice step, but can't finish the layup on the other end. He was trying not to draw any contact or get a charging call right there. Patrick for three, and he knocks it down. Falling backwards, Dallas Patrick gets it to go, and the lead for Otterbein is now back up to 10. 39-29, 16-20 to play in the second half. Crawford drives in, can't get it to go. Tipped up in the air, and Magerly comes down with it for capital. Combs trying to drive, kick, and Magerly, before he takes a shot, he's whistled for going out of bounds. That's a turnover right there. That'll be number nine for Capital. And so now Nixon will check back in for Capital. And a substitution for the Cardinals as well, Anthony Holmes, the 6'6 senior from Elder. See how the Cardinals can respond here. They can try to extend this double-digit lead. Meanwhile, Capital trying to hold serve here defensively as Heckman will pass it over to Evans. Evans, right wing, 14 to shoot for the Cardinals. And Evans will try to drive in and contact and a whistle and a foul. That would be against Dom Megerly. That's his first. And team's first of the half as now McCain thinking by who I thought put in some very valuable minutes towards the end of the first half when Crawford was dealing with foul trouble. McCain checks back in for, uh, for the Comets. Heckman checks in, uh, gets it over to Holmes. MJ Davis also in for the Cardinals. Long three for Patrick, and he knocks it down. Boy, Dallas Patrick is on fire from downtown. 42-29 in favor of the Cardinals. Two or three from behind the arc. And Crawford... Gets a blocking foul, and you can count the basket. We'll take that and yeah. one. Yeah. That's a lucky break right there for Capital. So count the bucket for for the Comets That'd as Heckman will be hit with a foul, it, it looks like. Is that his fourth? According to my sheet, yes. Fifth foul this half. The scoreboard... It's not showing, showing Heckman. Now it's been changed. And, boy, that could be huge right there as that Heckman is. has been very good offensively and defensively for the Cardinals. Crawford misses the free throw. Now he's got to be very careful now. 11-point lead for Otterbein. 15-18 remaining. 
Heckman for three. That's an air ball, but another offensive board by Otterbein. Evans with a pump fake. Now he'll try to drive. Closer jumper, and it rattles home. And now a timeout will be taken by Otterbein. Let's take a timeout as well. 15.08 remaining in the second half. It is Otterbein 44, Capital 31 on athletics.capital.edu. Fifteen oh eight remain in the second half. And it's Otterbein 44, Capital 31. And boy, the Comets, they could really use a big run here. Going to need somebody to just be a spark here. Crawford, left wing, over to Thompson. Thompson to Finkenbein, inside to Nixon. Nixon, backing his man down, twisting, turning, and a foul will be called against Anthony Holmes. That's two shots. That is Holmes is first and team's fifth. Team six, actually. Team six. Wow, that puts him in the bonus. Well, one more will put him in the bonus. Yeah. yeah. I know what you're saying. It's all good. As Nixon heads to the free throw line. First shot is up and good for Nixon. He's only been shooting 42% from the foul line this year as Thompson will check out and Dosick will check back in. Looking at the double-digit lead here. Every 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 shot, every point counts here. Nixon shot is in. So now it's an 11-point lead for Otterbein, 44 to 33. Well, let's see if Capital can start chipping away at this double-digit lead for the Cardinals. So they're trying to run some kind of trap here, zone defense. Lane, left wing, over to MJ Davis. Davis dribbling out of the corner. Now back to Lane, 13 to shoot. For the Cardinals, Patrick back to Lane. Lane top of the arc. He'll dribble inside. Nearly lost it, but maintains possession over to Evans. Four, three, inside, and a score for Anthony Holmes. And when you thought Capital was about to make a good defensive stop right there, at the narrow end, the Cardinals are able to pull away. Crawford. Back outside to Combs. 16 to shoot for the Comets. Combs trying to drive inside off the glass and no good tip in. That's good for Dosick. It's a good putback right there from the big man. 46-35. Cardinals with the lead. 13-48 remaining in the second half. Lane picked up defensively by Finkenbein. Lane left wing. Really knew his right. Now inside of the big man Holmes. Holmes will dribble back outside. Evans, three, no good, but the putback is good for M.J. Davis. And, boy, the offensive rebounds keep on a coming for the Cardinals. It's just not looking good right now. they got to figure out a way to stop. Uh, with Heckman on the bench right now, the Cardinals are still going full speed. Otterbein 48, capital 35. Davis cross half court over to Patrick, who's been red hot from three this half. Bryson Lane now directing traffic. 18 to shoot for the Cardinals. Over to Cam Evans. Evans dribbling to his left. Over to Davis. Seven to shoot. Evans dribbling inside. Just inside the foul line and he'll knock it down. That is filthy. I've seen him do that consistently tonight. Just drive full speed and with the quickness able to fade it away. Oh, what a free throw mid-range shot. No wonder he is the leading scorer in the OAC as a timeout will now be taken by Capital. We'll step aside once again. 12.33 remain in the second half. It's Otterbein 50, Capital 35 on athletics.capital.edu.
Well, things not looking too good for Capital at the moment. Trailing Otter by 50 to 35 with a little over 12 and a half to play here in the second half. Jonathan, what needs to change? You got to have some better ball movement around here from Capital. And it looks like they're doing it right now, but can't depend on one person to get it done. It's going to take a team effort. And Thompson gets fouled. That foul is going to go against MJ Davis. His first, team seventh. Still a lot of time left with that foul. 17 fouls for Otterbein, so Capital is going to be shooting free throws the rest of the way. And that's clutch. That is clutch right there. As Joe Thompson gets to the free throw line right now. Haven't seen much of him lately. You know, he was dealing with a wrist injury. That's why he has tape on his wrist during this matchup right now. But good to have him back in the lineup. He's a 70% free throw shooter on the season. Knocks down the first. So now Thompson will get a chance to knock down a second one. It's up, and it's good. 50-37. to 37. Otterbein with the lead. 12-17 to play in the second half. Lane near the left wing. Now he'll back out to half court. Pitches it to Evans. Now it's back to Lane. Lane, he'll hoist the three, and he'll knock it down. He was given a little bit of space there on the perimeter, perimeter Jonathan, and he took advantage of it. The Cardinals are doing a, a good job of finding selective shots, and they're falling for them right now. Dosick trying to drive inside. Backing his man down. Now it's back out to Thompson on the right wing. Thompson, he'll hoist a three. Well short. Finkenbein, offensive board. And he was looking for a foul call, but it's Cardinal basketball. Evans, right wing. Dribbling to his left. Evans to Patrick. Patrick, long jumper, and he knocks it down. Boy. How about the jumper by Patrick here in the second half? Not only from beyond the arc, but also inside the arc as well. It's like his shot is he's shooting off balance, but somehow every time he goes up, that ball is falling in. And an offensive foul will be called against Capital. They're going to get Griffin Dosick for a moving screen. That's only the team's second personal foul of the half. And now Seaver will check in along with Magerly. And along with Ralph, uh, uh, with uh, Roth as well. See, this game can be over quickly if the capital falls in, but you ought to be able to be strong here. You can bend, but don't break. Just got to take it one possession at a time from here on out. Exactly. Trailing 55 to 37, under 11 minutes to play here in the second half. Evans dribbling to his left. Evans down the lane, off the glass, no good, and Seaver grabs the board for Capital. Here comes Crawford. Crawford from the left point, and he got fouled. And he'll get a head to the free throw line. That's going to be on Dallas Patrick, his third. Team's eighth. Crawford uh, on the night is shooting one from three uh, on the free throw line. Him and her averaging 9.8 points per game. On the season, 60% from the free throw line. And that oh, one. boy. That didn't even graze uh, front iron. Calm down. Just take, take a breather. That's a good job by Seaver heading to his teammate, just consulting him. Relax, take a deep breather. Try Checking in for the Cardinals, by the way. Krager along with Scouten. Crawford's second shot is up and good. Just need to relax. You're good. Otterbein 55, Capital 38, 10 and a half to play. Lane, left wing, over to Davis. Davis back to Lane. Lane, driving inside, swung around. Davis thought about a three, but inside to the big man scouting. That was picture perfect passing on that half court set by the Cardinals. Now it's a turnover for Capital. Here comes Lane the other way. He'll pitch it to Davis, and Davis misses the layup. Evans with a putback attempt. He missed it, but he got fouled. Looks like it'll be a foul on Carter Combs. And it will be his second, team's third. Momentum 
fully in the Cardinals' direction right now. If you're Capital, what do you, what do you, what is your main goal to try to? You're, you're down large right now, but how do you, how do you try to come back in this situation? You just try to chip away as best you can as Evan makes uh, the first uh, free throw, and it just begins with making a stop defensively, getting a bucket, making a stop defensively, getting a bucket. The problem ha uh, that that I've seen. Uh, with uh, this team in this game, Jonathan, as the second free throw is made. Otterbein, they begin second and third and fourth opportunities with their offensive rebound. There have been a, a ton of one-and-done opportunities offensively for Capitals so far tonight. And that's pretty much been the big difference. The Cardinals have been t able to take advantage of those second and third chances as Magerly is able to knock down that shot. And that's why they possess this 19-point uh, lead right now. Capital bringing a full court pressure defense now. Now the, the Comets are trying to force turnovers here as the three-pointer on the way. That's no good. Out of bounds, and they'll give it to Capital. 59-40. Cardinals with the lead. 9.25 to go here in the second half. The Cardinals student section, which is behind the Cardinals bench, they've had a lot to cheer about. The Comets student section, the pride of the purple, eh, not so much. But maybe that will change here within the last few minutes or so. Combs trying to go baseline. And he falls down. And now a, a traveling violation is going to be called. It looked like it was going to be jump ball, but you know, it's deciding. Travel violation. So that's another turnover. That's number 13 uh, for Capital on this evening. Like we said, they average about 14 per game, but a credit to the Cardinals being out-rebounding capital right now. When you talk about the offensive, they got 16 offensive rebounds compared to capital six. That that speaks volume, so they're not even getting second chance opportunities. MJ Davis will pass it on over to Bryson Lane. 59 to 40 lead for the Cardinals. Nine minutes to go here in the second half. Over to Scout him. Scout him, the big man. Uh, he's looking for some help as he finally passes it over to Evans. 12 to shoot. Evans driving in, has his shot blocked by Seaver. Up ahead now to Crawford. Crawford going the other way, and he finishes at the other end. That's a strong finish right there by Crawford, staying with it. A little over eight and a half to play. Otterbein 59, Capital 42. Lane trying to drive inside. He'll kick it. Davis. Now in the hands of Evans, 15 to shoot. Lane, top of the arc. Dribbles to his left. Now to the left wing, over to Evans. Evans will pop a three, and he'll knock it down. Capital got trapped in a good screening from the Cardinals right there, and Evans was on the island. Timeout. We'll take one as well. 8-11 to play in the second half. Otterbein 62, Capital 42. On athletics.capital.edu. Eight eleven to play in the second half. Otterbein leading Capitals sixty-two to forty-two. And Jonathan, you know, you brought up a really good point during the commercial break about how the way this game has been transpiring is kind of similar to what we saw earlier this season in the Mountain Union game. Yeah, you, 
they're, when they were facing against Mountain Union, that's the second leading scorer in Christian Parker who came in and had a dominant game. Now that's somebody who was on your radar studying. And then this week your, your main focus was Cam Evans, and you did a good job of holding him in the first half, but you weren't expecting Julian Heckman to go off, and that changed your whole direction. And, you know, now you're like, who's going to go off? And you got Dallas Patrick going off, so it's just like, okay. Who do we put our main focus on? Cam Evans with 17. Heckman, meantime, with 11 points. He's one of four players in double figures and scoring for the Cardinals tonight, who lead Capitals 62-42. to 42. Twisting, turning, and a made bucket by Troy Scouten. And now a whistle has been called. That would be calling on Trey Scouten. So Scouten with his second. Team's ninth. And that will not result in free throws for Capital. As now Crawford. We'll bring it across half court. Down 22. Magerly, top of the arc. Over to Combs. Combs will jack up a three. And, and that's an air ball. That's not your game. Like that, that is his shot range, but that's not you're falling into a trap. That, that is what we call it when you start jacking up shots just to put something up. That's called in the trap right there. And, uh, Cardinals is forcing capital just to force up anything. 62-4 to 42. By the way, another one and done possession. There, there haven't been a lot of second, third, fourth chance possessions for capital where they've been able to crash the boards. Otterbein's been able to do that this evening. As Heckman. Top of the arc. Dribbling inside, back outside to Davis. Davis now trying to dribble inside. A couple of spin moves, and then he puts it back out. Now it's back in the hands of Davis. Three, two, Davis will hoist a shot. That's no good. Another offensive board by the Cardinals, however, and now they get to run a little bit more clock here offensively. Rebound battle right there, and offensive rebounds are, are crucial. And is that going to result in a foul? And that is against Crawford. That's his third, team's fourth, but... Going back to that right there, being out-rebounded in this situation, you're allowing the Cardinals to keep getting rebound after rebound after putback after putback. The Car Capitals' leading rebounder is Justin Nixon with four rebounds. Yeah. Yeah. Somebody's got to go do dirty work. Now, I know do some, like rebounding is not a pretty thing to do, but somebody's got to go will be willing to go down there and do the dirty work. And by the way, that's draining both physically and mentally to get beat on the boards like that time after time after time. As Evans will drive in over to Patrick for three. And no good. And a rebound taken by Capital. Crawford. Trying to drive in and wow, somehow got that bucket to go. He had to go past three, four. Cardinals defenders on his way to the 10. That was acrobatic right there. Otterbein 64, Capital 44. A little under six minutes to play here. Crawford ahead to Combs. To Thompson. Thompson lays it up and in. Put this right there, causing the turnover. 64 to 46. 543 to play in the second half. You said it best. Uh, Capital's going to have to start chipping away right now with 46. In his next 30 seconds or a minute, try to get it to 50. And go by fives and, and try to try to crawl back in this situation. Three-pointer on the way. That's no good for Scouting. And the rebound taken by Thompson. That's one that Capital is lucky that he missed right there. Three-pointer. Combs can't hit it from the corner. Here comes Evans on a run-out attempt. Evans to the hoop and scores. 19 points for Cam Evans right there at his season average. Only had six, seven points at the half, but has really turned it on here in the second half. And he had seven points in his last game against Wilmington, so uh, I guess he wasn't acceptable with that. Thompson inside. Combs can't get the tough shot to go. Battle for the loose ball. Combs has it, and then a foul called against Otterbein. Is that going to go against? Looks like it's going to go against Krager, who thought that it was going to be a jump ball. But instead, that's a foul against him. Tenth team foul. 
Jones. I thought that was the 10th team foul. Okay, according to the scoreboard, it's only nine. So Combs will head to the foul line. Still a one and one situation here for Combs. Every free throw counts right here. Combs perfect on the night. Combs shot is missed. Battle for the ball and the Cardinals come away with the rebound. Heckman up ahead to Lane. Lane dribbling to his right. Lane to the right wing. 13 to shoot for the Cardinals. Heckman over to Hanna. Back to Lane. Lane with a little spin move. Step back jumper. And he got hit on the shot attempt. It looks like a foul call on Crawford. Or is that Crawford? Or? I thought a three was put yeah. up by the hand of the official. So it looks like that went against somebody on Otterbond, Jerry uh, Krug Krager. Krager. Okay, so that's his third. And team's ten. Yep. So now it will result in two shots for Capital at the foul line. Sends Crawford back to the free throw line. Two of five on the night. Twelve points on the evening for Crawford. Looking to add to that total. Don't say impossible. But down 20. Four minutes left. About four. Shot is up, and it is good for Crawford. See, just like that is 19. And, you know, a few turnovers, you know, you can make something into nothing. Got to make shots. Got to make buckets. As Crawford trying to make one of his own here at the foul line. And it's up, and it's no good as he splits the pair. 66-47 to 47 in favor of Otterbein. 4-10 remain in the second half. Up ahead is Patrick, and Patrick got fouled by Finkenbein. His second. Team's fifth of the half. Dallas Patrick, the senior out of Gahanna, Ohio, went to the Wellington School during his prep days. 12 points, three rebounds. He has shot five of nine from the field, including two of four. From three-point land as his first shot is up and no good. And a substitution for Capital now is Thompson, the senior out of Galloway, will check in for the Comets. 4.08 remain in the second half. It's Otterbein 66, Capital 47. One more foul shot for Patrick. It's up and it's no good. So he goes over at the foul line. Combs over to Crawford. Crawford back over to Combs. Dribbling around over to Fink and Bind. Long jumper. That's no good on the rebound taken by the Cardinals. 348 and counting here in the second half. Now the Cardinals at this point, with every rebound that they collect, they're just going to look to run the clock down as much as they can. 41 rebounds as a team. Wow. Lane, top of the arc. Now he'll try to drive in, and he can't get it to go. The rebound is taken by Dom Eggerly. Dom over to Finkenbein for three. McCain off the mark. Rebound taken by Alex Hanna. Well, you're, in a, you're racing against the clock now, and you said it best. You have to hit the shots, and they just weren't falling for a capital right now in the second half. Julian Heckman. With 11 points. He's just dribbling around here as the clock ticks under. Three minutes to go. Being guarded by Crawford. Eight to shoot. Heckman trying to drive around, and they say he stepped out of bounds. It'll be a turnover for the Cardinals. 2.52 left to play. And Otterbein with a big lead, 66-47. to 47 as There are some folks that are starting to file out of the Capitol Center right now. Crawford on the right wing, guarded by Patrick, over to Combs. Combs, step back three, no good, rebound taken by Heckman. Under two and a half to play. Finkenbein forces a turnover, up ahead to Thompson. Thompson slams it home! Nice bingo. Oh right there. no, but Thompson is holding his right knee, or left knee. 
Boy, it has just been that type of night for Capital. Thompson was already dealing with a wrist injury earlier this season. He came down awkwardly following the dunk, and now members of the Capital training staff are taking a look at him. I mean, that's tough. You've played basketball. It can be scary coming down mm -hmm. after a driving layup or, or, or a dunk, and, and you know, that, that's the chance that you take when, when you going come, up like that. When you come off the ground as he'll come to his feet, he's not putting any pressure on that leg right there. Hopefully everything will be all right. But when you take flight in, in any sport, the way that you come down, um, you know, you just keep, keep him in your prayers and, and hope everything is all right. So Thompson will exit. It'll as, most likely be his night. As Trey Hammond will check back in for the comments. 2.17 to go. Cardinals up 66-49. Heckman feeds it over to Lane. A little bit of a press instituted by Capital, but the Cardinals are able to break it. Patrick for three. That's no good. Rebound taken by Crawford. Crawford across half court. Outside, three-pointer. No good. Rebound taken by Patrick following the miss by Carter Combs. I mean, you said it best. This is, the shots just aren't falling in Capital's direction. And a steal by Hammond. Hammond up ahead, and he'll score. Good job by Hammond. 66-51 now in favor of the Cardinals. Minute 35, and a foul will be called. And now a timeout's going to be taken by Otterbein. A full, full timeout here. Well, after this game tonight, Capitals going to be hitting the road. They're going to be at Muskingum on January 25th. And want to keep you guys aware of this very interesting start time, 5 o'clock on January 25th, not the customary uh, 7 o'clock start that we often see during the week. So, again, January 25th, Capital will be at Muskingum. Tip-off is scheduled for 5 p.m. And athletics.capital.edu will have the live stats uh, for you to follow that game. And then Capital is uh, back here. At the Capital Center, January 27th. This will be a Friday night game against one of the top teams in the OAC, John Carroll. That game is scheduled for a 7 o'clock start. We'll get things started with a short pregame show beginning at 6.50 p.m. Again, that's Capital Plain Osa, John Carroll on January 27th. Tip-off time for that game is scheduled for 7 o'clock. Taking a look at the uh, OAC standings, and as this is the final matchup for uh, OAC gameplay today, um, only teams above Capital, Heidelberg, John Carroll, and Mount Union. Heidelberg is the only team coming away with a loss today. Capital has got the one lead over Marietta right now, but they'll have to go against Marietta at home. Uh, but with Otterbein taking the sweep of the season right now, that should definitely boost them up above Capital when the standings come out and meantime capital on that razor edge when it comes to trying to host a game during the OAC tournament as Crawford gets fouled on his way to the bucket so he'll attempt a couple of free throws as Alex Hanna is hit with a foul for the Cardinals minute 25 remaining here in the second half Otterbein 66 capital 51 and uh, to think it was only a 28 to 23 lead for the Cardinals at the half as Crawford makes the first free throw. But so far, Otterbein has outscored Capital 38-29 here in the second half. Timely rebounds, clutch shots from the perimeter as Crawford misses the second free throw. I don't want to say that Capital came out lethargic, but the energy was not there to start off the second half as you were clearly already down, but you let Otterbein just... Oh. As Patrick is able to lay it up and in. 68-52, coming up on a minute to play. They try to lob it inside to Magerly. He lost it, but Combs is able to retrieve and put it in. Ottermine 68, Capital 54, 54 seconds and counting here in the second half. Patrick up ahead, and Dallas Patrick lays it in once again. Boy, he's turned out to have a terrific offensive night. 
the senior from Gehanna. Trey Hammond will shoot a three from the corner and he'll knock it down. Splash. 70 to 57. Cardinals with the lead. About 42 seconds to go in this game. Fed ahead to Hanna. And now to Heckman. Cardinals will run this clock down as much as they can. There's about a 10 second differential between shot clock and game clock. The Cardinals students who came to this game on their feet, clapping for their team, applauding their team. As Heckman is dribbling around, four seconds, three seconds, two seconds. Heckman will hoist a long three. That's no good. Rebound will be taken by Crawford. The remaining seconds will tick away. Crawford, he'll put up a deep three. That's no good. Combs will put it into the buzzer. Wow. And that's it. So Otterbein sweeps the season series on the men's side as they defeat Capital tonight by a final of 70-59. to They win the Orr tonight, and it is a split here tonight at the Capital Center. The women's team defeating Otterbein, but the men's team falling to the Cardinals. Just not not what you expected for, for this to play out here. And Otterbein came into here and were just the more dominant team. Just, that's, that's no easier way to put it. And uh, they came in here and, and showed dominance on the boards. And, hey, applaud, applaud to this team. Uh, this was not just a regular conference matchup. The rivalry team came and, and showed their true colors. Again, the final score, it's Otterbein 70, capital 59. We'll take a quick break. When we come back, we'll examine the final stats from this affair between these two longtime rivals as the Cardinals hoist the oar. Again, the final, Otterbein 70, Capital 59. This has been a presentation of Capital Comets Men's Basketball on athletics.capital.edu. Back here at the Capital Center as Otterbein ends up defeating Capital by a final of 70 to 59. Alongside Jonathan Brown, I'm Charlie Dance. Let's go ahead and examine the final stats from this game, beginning with the team statistics. Capital ends up shooting 39% from the field, Otterbein 42%. Both teams didn't really do a good job from three point range, didn't exactly distinguish themselves from downtown. Otterbein 7 to 27 from three point range, good for 26%. Capital 5 of 27 from deep, good for only 19%. Free throws. Capital 12 of 19, good for 63%. Otterbein, only 5 of 8, 63%. The big story coming from this game, the rebounds. Otterbein ends up out-rebounding Capital 46 to 33. That included 17 offensive rebounds by the Cardinals, which played a, a big part in their blowout win over the Comets here tonight. Other team statistics of note, Otterbein 13 assists, Capital 8 turnovers, Capital 14, Otterbein 10. Bench points, big advantage for Capital 26 to 9. Blocks just about even 4 to 3 in favor of the Comets. Both teams had 8 steals, fast break points, Otterbein 15, Capital 14. Points off turnovers, Capital 15, Otterbein 10. Points in the paint, Otterbein 40, Capital 32. Second chance points, 12 to 8 in favor of the Cardinals. And that's about it when it comes to the team statistics. Now on the, to the individual statistics. Here's Jonathan. Well, starting off with the team that was just more dominant, the Cardinals. Uh, they'll move on to 11-6 and six, uh, with a 5-5 five and five in conference. So getting to 500 overall. But uh, starting off with the individual stats, this man has six points in the first half and finishes with 19. Cam Evans, that's the reason he is the leading scorer in OAC. Not only that, he finished with 19 and 10 rebounds. So he was the team leading scorer and team rebounder as well. Uh, right behind him, Dallas Patrick had a, perform uh, per uh, uh, a 
a good performance uh, with 16 points right behind him as well. Troy Scout didn't finish with 12. And Julian Heckman uh, finished with 11. So that is four Cardinals players in double-digit figures right now. Like I said, Evans was the leading re rebounder. And he also led an assist uh, for his team with four overall. Uh, he had a block as well. Taking a look at Capital, Crawford was the leading scorer with 14 right behind him. Coming off the bench, Joe Thompson with 11. Leading rebounder for this team goes to Crawford with five. Uh, and there was a, a few few blocks going on for this team for a total. Uh, but credit the defensive end for Capital. Two steals apiece for Fickenbein, Ralph, and Nixon. Just unable to, to get it down. Uh, shots falling in their direction. Jonathan, bottom line is this is a tough pill to swallow for Capital. Obviously, you have the pomp and circumstance. You saw the women's team earlier tonight defeating Otterbein. So you're thinking off of a, a good win over what's usually a really good Marietta team. This could be a chance for Capital to build some momentum. But a really bad start offensively. They try to claw their way back. But then Otterbein with a great start to the second half as well. It's no wonder that they won this game because, A, they took care of the ball better. B, they were able to hit more clutch shots. And C, they were able to control the boards virtually for the uh, for the entirety of this game. These are all key points that you just named off there right there, especially with the rebounds. But I want to go back to the first half. You know, you let your opponents get to a strong, dominant start off in this matchup, and they were up 10-0 to at one point. Next thing you know, you, you start to struggle, and you get your points, and momentum starts to swing in Capitals' way. You go into halftime. It's 23-28. to You're down by five. You're in the locker room. I'm getting hyped. You, you're still in this game. You were down at one point by 13 in the first half. And next thing you know, like I said, they didn't come out lethargic, but they came out with the similar energy that they had to start the game off. And the Cardinals said, okay, we're going to turn it up a notch. And we saw that from Evans, like I said, being held from six, finishing with 19. Also, Good energy by Dallas Patrick as well as he was able to hit a couple of key threes at the beginning of the second half, and that really opened things up for the Cardinals uh, going forward, eventually leading to a victory for them. So, Capital has no choice but to move on. They will be at Muskingum on January 25th. That game will tip off at 5 o'clock. Be sure you tune in to athletics.capital.edu. We ourselves will not have the broadcast, but we'll have links to live stats and uh, the game broadcast from that site. And then we will be back on January 27th. This will be a Friday night game as John Carroll, one of the top teams in the OAC, comes to call in against the Comets. That game is scheduled for a 7 o'clock tip. We'll get things started with a short pregame show beginning at 6.50 p.m. For my broadcast partner, Jonathan Brown, this is Charlie Daniels saying one final time, the final score tonight from the Capitol Center. It's Otterbein 70, Capital 59. So long and good night from Bexley, Ohio.